what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Frank Stanfel. One more week left in the fantasy football season. We're here to clean up the waiver wire so you can take home the fantasy championship. What's happening, Frank? Not much, Greg. Still alive in two leagues, and it all comes down to this. Just in time to lose Chris Godwin, to lose Dalvin Cook. So we've got some work to do here, Greg. Yes, we do. So let's begin at the top with the quarterbacks. And we start where we left off last week. It's Gardner Minshew of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Faced off against Oakland. Got the job done. Frank, you're buying again here this week against Atlanta. Yeah, we're buying back into Gardner Minshew. Somewhat pedestrian once again in week 15. Finished 17 of 29 for 201 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, and added 27 rushing yards heading into Monday Night Football. He was, he is still the QB 10 overall in week 15. So somewhat pedestrian, but still getting it done from a fantasy perspective. And the Jaguars can't run the football right now. Leonard Fournette has rushed for more than 50 yards just once in his last six games. So I think that there is going to be some passing volume here for Gardner Minshew going up against the Atlanta Falcons. They're playing this game in Atlanta inside of the Dome. So we could see some points going both ways here. The Falcons defense has played better as of late. They've allowed just one passing touchdown in each of the last three games. But they're just 26th in pass defense DVOA overall. So considering all these things, the fact that the Jaguars can't really run the football. They're indoors. I think we get some back and forth. I think that Gardner Minshew can once again sneak in as a lower-end QB1, which makes him a streaming option heading into your fantasy football championship. Absolutely. He's in the conversation to be a streaming option here this week. Some other Jacksonville players will make this list as well. Frank called it last week. But Gardner Minshew, he's a certainly streamable option here on Sunday. But if you want to go in a different direction for the first time here ever on the Hurry Up, we go to Washington where Dwayne Haskins is playable this week. Why? He's just facing the Giants, baby. And Greg, as we talk about seemingly often here on the FanDuel Hurry Up, we know that you are a New York Giants fan, so you have seen this defense up close and personal for most of the season, and you're right. They are not good. And Dwayne Haskins looked pretty good in Week 15. This was the most comfortable I have seen him personally, and it seems like the game is slowing down for him a little bit. It was a good matchup going up against the Philadelphia Eagles, but again, in Week 16, a good matchup going up against the New York Giants. Heading into Monday Night Football, Dwayne Haskins is the QB9 overall in Week 15. Completed 19 of 28 passes, 261 yards, two touchdowns, 9.3 yards per attempt. A lot of that came on the 75-yard touchdown to Terry McLaurin, but it wouldn't surprise me if they can pull that off in Week 16 against the Giants as well. And Washington got a little bit creative. They let Dwayne Haskins run some read options. He added 26 rushing yards. Uh, this Giants defense, we're going to continue to talk about this. They just let Ryan Fitzpatrick throw for 279 yards, two touchdowns. They've allowed eight passing touchdowns over their last three games. The seventh most fantasy points to quarterback so far this season. I don't know that I'm ready to put Dwayne Haskins in my lineup in a one quarterback league, but if you are in a super flex and you have some tough matchups, I think Dwayne Haskins is actually an option you can look at heading into Week 16. Frank, Dwayne Haskins is not a good quarterback. But the Giants' defense, they're not good either. That combination should lead to a lot of points for Washington, and in particular, Dwayne Haskins on Sunday. It's featuring two teams that want to lose. These defenses are not good, and when it has a bad quarterback against a bad defense, I'll take the quarterback as we have the last two weeks, especially last week with Gardner Minshew and Ryan Fitzpatrick. We're back on Minshew here this week. And we go with Haskins as well, facing off against a bad Giants team. It's a battle for Chase Young. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Let's move on to the running backs, Frankie, and in particular, Mike Boone. When Alexander Madison went down last week, we told owners of Dalvin Cook, pick up Mike Boone, just in case. You know Dalvin Cook's already injured. Well, now he's more significantly injured, and we don't know the status of Alexander Madison, which means Mike Boone is the next man up. He scored not one but two touchdowns on Sunday, and he may be the league winner. And shout out to you, Greg. I know that you are a Dalvin Cook owner in one of your leagues, and you were one of those owners that picked up Mike Boone once you saw the injury to Alexander Madison. So congrats on beating the waiver wire. But Mike Boone is going to be the top ad this week, regardless of what information we have out of Minnesota Vikings camp. You know, what's going on with Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. We'll have to see. Obviously, Dalvin Cook re-injured his shoulder. Alexander Madison did not play in Week 15 because of an ankle injury. Mike Boone led this team with 21 offensive snaps. He had 13 carries for 56 yards and two touchdowns, undrafted out of Cincinnati. He tested extremely well. I mean, this guy's a physical freak. 80th percentile or higher in 40-yard dash, burst score, bench press as well. 
It's a good matchup. Monday Night Football in Week 16 going up against the Green Bay Packers, who have allowed the sixth most fantasy points to running backs so far this season, 4.89 yards per carry. So regardless of what information we have, before you can put in your waiver wire bids, you have to pick up Mike Boone because of this injury to Dalvin Cook, because of this injury to Alexander Madison. We know that the Vikings want to run the football, and it's a really good matchup. It seems like one of these running backs comes out of nowhere every single year and helps us win a fantasy football championship. This year, it might be Mike Boone. Came out of nowhere, the third year running back, a preseason darling, Mike Boone, man. Hopefully, you get him now because he's somebody that legitimately could win the championship. Now, if it's not Mike Boone, you may want to go in a different direction. Potentially someone that you drafted in the second or third round of winning a ship. Took eight weeks off, and now he's back. Can Kerry on Johnson really come off the bench to win people leagues, Frankie? I think the answer is yes, Greg, because who else are the Detroit Lions going to turn to? Shouldn't we be talking about Wes Hills, who just scored two touchdowns this past week? No, 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 no. We're not doing the Wes Hills thing. If Carryon Johnson is good to return off injured reserve, he's eligible to do so in Week 16. I think that he will be the guy. There's quotes from Carryon Johnson out there that says he wants to play. He wants to get back on the field. He's not worried about looking forward to next year or potentially re-injuring himself. He wants to get on the field. And I think that if he's healthy enough to do so, they will give him that opportunity. He's been practicing each of the past two weeks and again in week 16 he actually is eligible to return while carry on johnson was healthy and active with the lions he averaged 56 percent of the lion snaps that is most among all the running backs this season in the detroit backfield we've gone through the ty johnson's the jd mckissick's even our guy bo scarborough but carry on johnson if he is active he will be the guy for the Detroit Lions here. We know what he's capable of. He's a good pass catcher. They're going to use him in the red zone. They did that earlier this season. They're going up against the Broncos in week week 16, which is a tougher matchup. You know, they are they are tough in terms of yards per carry. They do allow 5.5 uh, receptions per game to opposing running backs, so it's easier to throw to the running back against that de- uh, Denver Broncos defense. But regardless, I think that if he is active, you can grab him. We know what on Johnson is capable of. He's probably more of a flex, Greg, but that's perfectly fine. People are looking for flexes this time of year. There's a lot of injuries going on right now. I don't know how many snaps or carries or touches that Carryon Johnson's going to get Sunday, but if he's active and you own him, you are going to be really tempted to play him as one of your two flex options. He's facing off against a Denver team that he can be up. We'll see if he does it. We'll see if he's active. We'll see if he plays. We'll see if he wins you a ship on Sunday. Let's move on to the wide receivers, and that brings us to another player that could win you a fantasy championship all of a sudden. And it's Rashad Perryman. He wasn't on anybody's radar just two weeks ago. And now, he is the number one receiver in Tampa Bay. There is no Mike Evans. There is no Chris Godwin. And O.J. Howard still sucks. That means Rashad Perryman is your man, Frank. What a year, Greg. Rashad Perryman in the year 2019 is fantasy football relevant, especially going into our championship week But I think that he has to be based on what he just showed us in week 15 and the fact that we are dealing with the injuries with this Tampa Bay offense. Obviously, Mike Evans is out for the year. Chris Godwin left in week 15. It's not looking good. Bruce Arians has already spoke about this. He said, you know, it's not looking good for Chris Godwin, his availability heading into week 16. Perryman went crazy. Five catches, 113 yards, three touchdowns finishing as the wide receiver one overall, unless Michael Thomas can overtake him. Uh, But he only saw 14% of the target share, did see 26% of their air yards. We know that Tampa Bay likes to throw the ball deep. Rashad Perryman is going to be their guy when they want to throw the deep ball in week 16. He played on 67 offensive snaps. That was most among Tampa Bay wide receivers. He's going up against the Texans. This Texans secondary has been inconsistent. There have been stretches where they look pretty good at shutting down wide receivers. And then there was this past week where A.J. Brown goes for eight catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown. Tampa Bay wants to throw the football. Rashad Perryman is the wide receiver one. Don't overthink this. If you need a wide receiver, if you lost Chris Godwin, Perryman is undoubtedly the top ad this week. Rashad Perryman, much like everybody else we named, has the ability to win you a week, win you a league. Perriman with Jameis Winston throwing for his 300 and four interceptions and four touchdowns on a weekly basis, without question, your top wide receiver ad. So get him now or lose. Those are the only two options. If you don't get Perriman and you want to go in a different way, Frank, you've been on Chris Conley all season long. And without DJ Shark in the lineup against Oakland, you loved him. All he did was produce, scoring a couple touchdowns yesterday for you. Can you do it again on Championship Sunday? 
I think Chris Conley can do it again. Obviously, we have to pay attention to the status of DJ Shark. He did not play this past week because of an ankle injury. There's a chance that he returns in week 16, but he was ruled out early last week on Friday. So personally, I don't think that it's looking good for DJ Shark. I don't know why they would want to rush him back. And Chris Conley, as you mentioned, Greg, had a really good game. Four catches for 49 yards and two touchdowns against the Oakland Raiders. He led the team with eight targets, 28% of the target share, and 37% of their air yards. Uh, he took advantage of that good matchup, and I think that he can do so against the Atlanta Falcons as well. Like we said when we were talking about Gardner Minshew earlier, this Falcons secondary has been playing better as of late, but the Jaguars' offense, they've actually had to throw the ball more recently because they, they haven't been able to run the ball effectively with Leonard Fournette. The Falcons have actually been pretty good against the run, so if they can't run it with Fournette, I think they're going to have to throw the ball again. If DJ Chark is not out there, it's likely a lot of Chris Conley, a lot of D.D. Westbrook, once again, so pay attention to this injury status of DJ Chark, but if he can't go, I think Chris Conley makes for a wide receiver three once again in a solid matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. It's a really nice matchup with the Atlanta Falcons. If DJ Chark is out there, maybe D.D. Westbrook, a little bit more limited as well. Gardner Minshew found his connection with Chris Conley, and it wasn't just down the field. It was at the goal line as well. Chris Conley, very viable here in your fantasy championship. Let's move on to the tight end position, a, a position we've streamed all season long. This week, we turn our attention back to Tennessee, where John New Smith was a major part of the offense yesterday against the Houston Texans. This week, he's facing a New Orleans Saints team that would be vulnerable, or at least us Jack Doyle owners hope he is on Monday night. What do you think about John New Smith here this Sunday? I was really impressed with what I saw from John New Smith in Week 15 against the Houston Texans. It seems like... The Tennessee Titans were trying to find ways to manufacture touches for Jonu Smith in this game. He caught all five of his targets for 60 yards. He also had a 57-yard run. He looked like a wide receiver on that play, and this guy's he's, he's a big dude. He's a big tight end. Looked really athletic. I was really impressed from what I saw from Jonu Smith this past week. He played on 81% of the snaps. He ran a route on 26 of Tannehill's 41 dropbacks yesterday. And the Titans are going up against the New Orleans Saints in Week 15, as you mentioned, Greg. Uh, as of the as of when we're recording this before Monday Night Football, the Saints have allowed a touchdown to a tight end in three of their last five games. So it's a good matchup for Jonu Smith. They're trying to find ways to get him involved. He's really making the most of his opportunity. They need someone else to throw the ball to. It's basically just AJ Brown and Jonu Smith right now. Good matchup heading into Week 16. Obviously, check to see if Jacob Hollister is available in your league because he's going up against the Arizona Cardinals. But if he's not, I think Jonu Smith is the next streaming tight end there heading into Week 16. Next up, Jonu Smith. Why not give him an opportunity here for Tennessee? They're giving him an opportunity. It's our turn as well. Jonu Smith can produce big games. Well, we'll see if he does this weekend. Called him a bum earlier in the show. He said he sucks, and yet here he is, Frank. You couldn't just quit him. You couldn't do it one last time. So, O.J. Howard, here's why you'll lose people fantasy championships. Frank? Well, thanks for the introduction there, Greg, and I'm sure people want to strangle me at this point based on my recommendation to draft O.J. Howard. I'm pretty sure I've told you to pick him up multiple times throughout the year. Why don't we do it just one more time heading into Week 16? What can go wrong, right? But... The opportunity is there. There's a lot of injuries with this Tampa Bay offense right now. As we referenced when talking about Brashad Perryman, no Mike Evans. Looks like there's going to be no Chris Godwin heading into week 16. And I really like the usage that I saw out of OJ Howard this past week. He had four receptions for 46 yards, eight targets, and 19% of the target share actually led the Tampa Bay Bucks this past week for OJ Howard. And look at the volume. They, they're going to throw the football. Oh, uh, James Winston just threw the ball 42 times, and they won by 21 points. They won huge in this game, and he still threw the ball over 40 times in this game. They can't run the ball effectively with Ronald Jones or with Peyton Barber. 88% of the snaps for O.J. Howard this week. He ran a route on 28 of 44 with James Winston dropbacks here. The Houston Texans just allowed Jonu Smith to go over 100 total yards. They allowed Noah Fant and Jeff Hireman to score touchdowns in Week 14. It's a good matchup. Look, this is poetic justice. We all drafted O.J. Howard. We were excited about it. He is going to win you fantasy championships. Mark my words. Nope. Let's move on to the defense, Frank. And this defensive stream this week, there are a couple out there. I know I'm looking for one personally. So who do you got uh, that you recommend to us? 
You're right, Greg. There are a lot of defensive streams that we can look at heading into Week 16, but I'm paying attention to Washington going back to the chase for Chase Young, Greg. Someone has to win this game, and Washington has been competitive the past couple of weeks. I think that they are still playing hard for their interim head coach, Bill Callahan, and their defense has actually showed up. They're averaging 4.8 sacks per game over their last five games. They're going up against the New York Giants in Week 16. Whether it's Eli Manning or Daniel Jones, it doesn't matter to me. Eli Manning, while he threw two touchdowns in Week 15, he still threw three interceptions. If Daniel Jones gets back on the field, we know that he holds on to the ball way too long. He takes a lot of sacks. He fumbles as well. So regardless of who the quarterback is, it doesn't matter to me. I think that it's going to be a good matchup. This Washington defense getting a lot of sacks, playing well. To me, they're the top stream heading into Week 16. By starting the Washington football team, you know you're going to get a couple of interceptions or at least fumbles. Daniel Jones doesn't know how not to turn the football over. So on Sunday, you'll get that. Hopefully, they keep the Giants off the board enough to find the ends on themselves. So again, they win the battle for Chase Young, which means they really lose the battle for Chase Young. See how that works? That's going to do it for us here in the FanDuel. Hurry up, Frank. It's been a blast. Good luck in all of your fantasy finals. Thanks, Greg, and good luck to you as well. Good luck to everybody else out there. Make sure you go and grab Mike Boone or Brashad Perryman this week. Mike Boone, Brashad Perryman, the keys to winning fantasy championships. As the idiots say, just like we drew it up. For Greg Stample, I'm Greg Sussman. We'll see you tomorrow.